Pico County banned the installation of boat lift covers like these in 2010 to protect waterfront property owners' views and prevent navigation hazards. But I-Team investigator Adam Walser uncovered that rule hasn't been enforced while hundreds of unpermitted covers have been installed. It has a cabin, it's got a bathroom, it's got a kitchen. Shireen and Barkley Brown bought this 30-foot boat named Gone Golfing after moving into a Hudson Canal side home in 2014. They said they could easily navigate their channel until their neighbor installed a boat lift cover, which Barkley hit last July while returning home. After sustaining over, you know, well over $25,000 in damage to our own vessel, we haven't been able to leave our canal since July 10, 2020. The Brown son and five grandchildren were on board when a metal pole used to hold fishing lines called an outrigger caught the corner of the neighbor's cover. And I see sun grabbing it, it's ricocheting and flying, and I'm just like, oh my God. When that outrigger turned loose off the side of that boat, it was literally like a cannon went off. Nobody was hurt, but Shireen complained to county code enforcement after discovering a county ordinance that reads overhead coverings are prohibited on docks, lifts, pilings, or similar structures built over the water. They are absolutely not permitted by Pasco County ordinance. It's literally held on with bungees, as you can see. Jeremy Gamble All disagrees with that assessment. Hudson and other areas of Pasco, I mean, we've been doing as many as we can do. Gamble owns Coastline Boat Lift Covers, which manufactured the cover on the Browns' neighbor's boat lift and dozens of others in their subdivision. How many of these do you guys have in Pasco County? I don't know the exact number, but it's near 200. Gamble says his lift cover didn't cause the Browns accident. They had lost control, plowed into a floating dock, damaged it, and then ran into our cover. It was like a car losing its brakes, running into a house, then blaming the house. And Gamble says attorneys have advised him that the current ordinance doesn't apply to his covers because they aren't permanent. Our product clamps on. It's a temporary removable structure. It does not alter the original permanent structure in any way, and uh, it doesn't apply to the ordinance. You got a 17,000 pound boat under power, yep. pushing against it. If that was temporary, it, it should have gone over in the street, mm -hmm. but it didn't. It stayed right there, it didn't even, didn't even bend it. Gamble says his installers can take the covers down in a matter of minutes, which is recommended when sustained wind speeds reach more than 70 miles an hour. These are meant to, to be up all the time unless there's a storm, right? Sure, absolutely. Yeah, that's true, but at the same time, they still have to define that in their ordinance. Gamble says he's been working with the county to modify the rules for coastal waterways after commissioners voted in 2019 to allow boat lift covers on inland lakes and rivers. A discussion of those proposed changes to the 2010 ordinance came up at a February Pasco County Commission meeting. The structures are not allowed. You can't take a position today about amnesty if you don't know what the ordinance that you're going to adopt is. Currently, they're prohibited. It's That's not right. being enforced. It should be enforced, but it's not being enforced. The ones that were built illegally were still built illegally, so they should be, in, the code should be enforced on those. I don't know exactly what we should be doing about the ones that were put up illegally, but they shouldn't have been put up, number one. The board voted four to one not to move forward with changes to the rules, and commissioners instructed the county staff to investigate where all covers are located so they could potentially begin citing structures that are not in compliance. They should be citing every uh, roof in here, uh, this one particularly, and they need to have them removed. They need to be brought down. We're a country of laws. This is a law in Pasco County. If it means nothing, then why should we abide by any other ordinance? Gamble says if the county starts fining him and his customers, he'll take legal action. We go to court. We're waiting to get cited, plain and simple. County leaders say that investigation is continuing and they're waiting on the results before the county commission will consider changing the existing county ordinance. I'm I-Team Investigator Adam Walser taking action for you.